In section 5.2, we'll be focusing on proving that lines are parallel. Now, you will have to recall some information from chapter 4 here, specifically from section 4.5 with the introduction to parallel lines. Let's first start off by talking about the exterior angle inequality theorem. It states that the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either remote interior angle. So if we look at this diagram here, our exterior angle is this red angle, angle BCD, while one interior angle is this blue angle, angle BCA is an adjacent interior angle, while this yellow angle, angle ABC, is one of the remote interior angles, and the purple angle, angle BAC, is the other remote interior angle. So what this theorem is saying is that this red exterior angle must have a measure that is greater than each of these remote interior angles. So the red angle must be greater than the purple angle, and it must be greater than the yellow angle. Let's talk about where this exterior angle inequality theorem comes from. So if we take a look at the diagram here, we want to prove that this exterior angle is greater than each of the remote interior angles. So we are going to locate the midpoint M of segment BC, and we are going to draw a segment AP so that segment AN is congruent to segment MP. Then we connect the two points C and P. We know that segment MB is congruent to segment MC because of the midpoint, and then we can get some vertical angles congruent. Therefore, we know that triangles ABM and PCM are congruent by side angle side, and that means that angle 1 is congruent to angle B by CPCTC. Looking at the diagram, we can then say that that entire exterior angle, BCD, must be greater than the measure of angle 1, because angle 1 is inside of that angle. So angle 1 must be smaller than that yellow angle, BCD. But since angle 1 is congruent to angle B, we can use the substitution property to then say that angle BCD must be greater than angle B, which is one of our remote interior angles. To prove that angle BCD is greater than angle A, we can use a similar process using the other exterior angle. So for example, if we're looking here and we want to find the restrictions on X, we have our exterior angle and then we have one remote interior angle. So based off of that theorem, now you'll have to recognize this just by looking at a diagram, okay? Based off of that theorem, we can say that 3x minus 18, which represents our exterior angle, must be greater than 30, which is the measure of one of the remote interior angles, but that angle must also be less than what? Hmm. Let's look at the diagram. It's not a straight angle which we can assume from diagrams, so it has to be less than 180 degrees. Now don't forget when solving an inequality, you have three different pieces. So when you're adding 18, you want to make sure you're adding it three times. And once we're done solving this, we can say that x must be greater than 16, but less than 66. For the parallel line theorems, I'm going to give you a few moments to fill these in. If you have to press pause at this time to make sure you copy down all six theorems, please do so. Now this goes back to section 4.5 when we're talking about the different angles associated with parallel lines. So if we know that certain angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And if certain angles are supplementary, then we have parallel lines as well. Out of all the theorems that we just wrote down, I want us to prove this theorem in particular, which states that if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. This theorem is the building block to prove the other theorems true. So we would use this theorem to then say if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel, or if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Let's start off by approaching this in an indirect proof. So, let's assume that lines A and B are not parallel, which means they would have to intersect at some point. 
I'm going to construct the transversal here and add in our angles 2 and 4. If you notice here now, angle 2 is an exterior angle of this yellow triangle, and angle 4 is a remote interior angle in that triangle. Based off of the theorem that we just talked about, that then means that the measure of angle 2 must be greater than the measure of angle 4. But this contradicts our given, which states that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Therefore, our assumption is false. And that means that the two lines, A and B, must be parallel. Now let's talk about number six. Number six states that if coplanar lines are perpendicular to a third line, then the lines are parallel. So let's say we have those two lines M and N that are each perpendicular to this yellow line L. That then means that lines M and N are parallel to each other. Let's do some further examples below. So for these examples, we want to state which lines are parallel and write down the theorems that justify your answer. For something like this, the first thing I want you to be thinking about doing is highlighting a couple of different things. The first thing you want to do is highlight the line that forms a side of both angles. So in this case here, this line SQ forms a side of both of those angles that we have tick marks on. Then with a different color, we want to highlight the other two rays that form the sides of the given angles. So we have rays SP and QR. Now, what that says is, since those angles are congruent, which lines are parallel? Well, it's those two blue ones. So we can say that PS must be parallel to QR. But we have to say why, and this goes back to the six theorems above. So we have to think back to section 4.5 here and think, what kinds of angles are those? And those are alternate interior angles. So if our alternate interior angles are congruent, then that results in parallel lines. Let's take a look at the second example. Once again, we're going to highlight the transversal, which is the line that forms the side of both angles in yellow. And then in a different color, we're going to highlight the other rays that form the sides of the given angles. So there, we can result in our parallel lines, and we can say that MO is parallel to LP. Now let's think back to chapter 4, what kinds of angles are those? And for these, we're working with corresponding angles. And since those corresponding angles are congruent, that means that those two lines are parallel. For examples 3 and 4, I'd like you to try these on your own. So you are going to hit pause and then compare your answers with mine. For this one, number three, you should have gotten that BC is parallel to DE because we're working with alternate exterior angles that are congruent. And then for number four, you should have gotten that QR is parallel to ST because we're working with corresponding angles that are congruent. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment.